After a few hours, I was sitting in the garden, eating two plain tomatoes without oil, and a small piece of bread, thinking of all the good things God has given me. He gave me a nice house situated in such a beautiful area that even rich people envy. I do not have to pay any rent, unlike so many people, who struggle to earn their living. I have my daily food without having to work hard in some factory. The monks around the area I live are nice. As I was filled with these thoughts, I felt a sweet grief inside me for being ungrateful to God, and I started crying, being unable to continue eating. While I was in this state, suddenly, I saw the young man who had visited me earlier and had asked me to become my disciple, standing by the fence. I didn't want him to see me crying, so I went inside to wash my face, and then I opened the gate to let him in. Looking disturbed, he said to me, Don't pretend to be an aesthetic. I saw you eating meat, and when you saw me coming, you went inside to hide it from me. Now I know what you really are. I started laughing, but I did not give any excuses. I was stunned by his way of thinking and the way he cultivated his negative thoughts. Elder Paisios had a very positive thinking. Even under the worst circumstances, he thought positively. He even managed to extract good out of the most harmful things by using them in a special way. Once, one of the visitors, who had been greatly assisted by Father Paisios, asked him as he was departing if there was anything he could send him. The elder explained that he did not want anything. Since the visitor insisted, he finally said to him jokingly, Well, send me cigarettes. The visitor left, and after some time, Father Paisius received a package through the mail. It was a big box containing many packs of cigarettes. When the elder saw this, he was astonished. What was he going to do with all these cigarettes? On the one hand, he could not throw them in the garbage, wasting all that money spent for purchasing them. On the other hand, he did not want to give them away, causing harm to the health of other people. In the following days, Father Paisius asked one of his visitors if he smoked. He nodded his head. How many packs a day? asked the elder. Three, he answered. <laughs> Look, said the elder, smoking so many cigarettes is harmful to your health and also very expensive. Let's make a deal. During the next few months, I will offer you the cigarettes for free, but you will only smoke one pack per day. He agreed, and Elder Paisios gave him the cigarettes, feeling satisfied for not throwing them away, and for helping someone restrain his passion. The spirituality of a person is defined by the quality of his thoughts. One day, three men were sitting in a park chatting. Suddenly, a young man ran by them. When they saw him, they all thought of something. The first thought, he must have stolen something, so he is running to escape. The other thought, he must be late for his date with some girl, and that is why he is running. And the third said to himself, most probably he is a chanter in a church and runs to be on time for the service. Three men had three different thoughts for the same person. However, only the last one, who had a positive thought, was benefited, whereas the other two were spiritually harmed. Father Paisius always insisted by saying, when one of our brothers has a negative thought, we must do kindly and humbly try to correct it. It is our duty to do so. Today, many people, unfortunately, including some of our spiritual fathers, instead of trying to correct falsified thoughts, they will either consent to them or even distort the positive ones. I will give you an example so you can understand the way they function. Suppose a young man said to a spiritual father, A friend of mine did this and that to me. And thus he starts telling his negative thoughts about his friend. His spiritual father, instead of trying to change his thoughts and make him love his friend again, views his problem from a social point of view, and wishing to be nice, says to him, Since you know what kind of person your friend is, do not pay attention to him, just ignore him. The young man may superficially feel better after listening to the words of his spiritual father, but his negative predisposition towards his friend is still inside. Now, when his friend goes to the same spiritual father to tell him the same thing, the spiritual father faces the problem in the same way. He once again regards the problem from a social point of view and calms him down. He lets him, however, keep inside him the negative thoughts he has for his friend. This way, the elder said, I can even please the devil if I wish to. You will not see what happens next, since divine justice exists in our lives. At some point, the two friends, who still have negative thoughts inside them, meet and begin accusing each other. You are this and that. I talk to my spiritual father, and he also thinks the same way of you. Eventually, they discover that their common spiritual father tried to do 
was just be nice to them. As a result, they end up losing their trust and respect for him. The correct way of dealing with similar cases is the following, which I also apply. A married man came to me to discuss the problem he was facing with his wife and how her behavior was affecting his thoughts. I immediately started finding excuses for his wife's behavior. In the end, I told him that he should glorify God for the wife he gave him, and he's the one responsible for destroying their loving relationship. I made him question his behavior and love his wife again by convincing him that he is in the wrong and that he should get rid of all his negative thoughts. I did exactly the same thing with the wife. When she came to see me, I scolded her so both got rid of their negative thoughts and ended up loving each other again. Moreover, they also understood why I scolded them as they realized that my only aim was to bring them back together.